Okay, we are live with week two of Cartoon Brews live stream. Welcome. Uh, hey, this is I'm Amit. I'm from LA. I am the publisher of Cartoon Brew, and I am joined by Cole Delaney from Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm Cole Delaney, like you said, from Dublin, Ireland. Give me one second. I'm 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 already uh, having today. Today's been one of those days <laughs> of immense uh, technical difficulties getting started, yeah. and I'm trying to uh, get this fixed. How are you doing, Cole? How's your week been going? I'm good. I'm gonna. I'll I'll talk for you while you uh, figure yeah, that stuff out for you. a second, guys. I would say to anyone who is watching or listening, we're gonna go through some stories, um, that popped up during the week, and that we thought were interesting to share with everyone to pick apart and also if you have any thoughts or questions please put it in the comments because the best part about doing a live stream is being able to connect directly with people and answer questions that they may have on the fly or engage directly at least for me that was the most rewarding thing about last week i'm not sure what it was for you and me but i'm speaking for me and that was two weeks ago. So our, our goal. Well, is, there we uh, go. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we're going to do it weekly, but we've already missed the second week. So this is technically the third week, but but we've only done one other live stream before this. So <laughs> yeah, we're we're still getting, you know, we're still figuring things out here. So uh, I think, yeah. Cole, you figured them out. I'm still figuring things out. <laughs> My hands are not on the steering wheel. Um, so <laughs> you know, Amit is running the show here. But uh, I want to ask, how was your week, Amit? Tell me anything interesting. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, it, we're we are. I think we've announced this on the site, but we are doing a print edition for Annecy. It's our first ever print edition, and that is uh, turning into quite a challenge. So, because wow. uh, you know, when you haven't done print in a long time, uh, mm -hmm. I've done a lot of print, but but I'm getting back into it, and uh, and the goal is is that we're gonna have two issues a year one that's going to come out in annecy every year and one that will wow. come out in the fall that's pretty tight on top of each other isn't it like late fall early fall or probably like late fall yeah probably okay. like november yeah. december for uh, award uh, season issues okay I and get you. you will not be able to buy the issues they are going to be just distributed uh around mm. la and at annecy but it's it's not for sale. It's it's just something that we're going to be handing out. So I, I hope as many people get them as possible. The goal is not to sell these issues. The goal is to mm. just hand them out. And um and I think that's that's kind of where we want to take that. We don't want to make a business out of it and and try to sell stuff because no one buys magazines anymore. I don't really mm. understand the uh, purpose of of you know trying to make a business model off of a magazine. So so we're just going to be handing them out. Yes, yet you're printing them, <laughs> yes, <laughs> putting them yeah, together. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, some, there's something special about holding yeah. a magazine in your hands. Uh, there's so, there's something I don't know. I, I still yes. enjoy the magazine idea. It's just hard to make a business out of it. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's nice to, and sometimes it's just nice to also not to have a screen. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we, I know you're purely digital cartoon brew, but well, up until this year. But um, there's something nice. You can sit with your cup of tea, have a few biscuits, like coffee pops, whatever you want, and just relax, read about, I don't know, whatever you're going to put in this article. I think it's a lovely idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think we've even announced what the issue is, but a lot of people mm. around L.A. know what it's about. It's uh, it's going to be really interesting. This this first issue that we're putting out, uh, it's it's uh, a lot of people have heard about it because of because of what it's about. And mm -hmm. um, and I can't wait to share it with everybody. Okay, amazing. Well, what else have you got to share with us today? So we got a really big day. We got two major stories that we want to talk about, and mm -hmm. uh, one of them is what's going on at Icon Studios mm -hmm. in um in Vancouver, the unionization okay. effort there, and the other is an update on Coyote versus Acme. There's a lot happening with that film. Uh, so I, first of all, are, are, is anybody, can, is anybody able to put a comment there? I'm, uh, we want to see if the comments are working. So does anybody want to yeah. try to put in a chat, uh, chat message there? Mm -hmm. It might be a bit of a delay, but we'll, we'll see them sure, coming. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. We'd like, we just want to make sure things are working because all this morning it's been trying to make sure things work. And yeah, you didn't warn me about how difficult it was going to be to 
do a live stream. There is so much tech involved with this that it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And I'm still not gonna, I'm still not seeing any messages. So if if anybody can put put a message up there, and there is a delay, there's like a I don't know ten second delay or something. So I'll put in a message. There we go. All right, there we go. Yeah, you're, okay. <laughs> so, so that's working. This is me. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And and uh, hey there. Okay, we got it. Hi, at yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The nervous oh, bat. Nervous bat. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. I love that name. The nervous bat. What a great name. I absolutely adore that. Um, anyway, sorry, you were talking about Vancouver's icon. Yeah, so creative let's, studio. let me try to switch screens here. This is going to be fun. Mm. There we go. Okay, that's working. We got Ariel here. <laughs> and um, so here's what's going on. We have, you know, Icon Studios in Vancouver. They are the latest that is, the latest studio that's trying to unionize under the Canadian Animation Guild, IATSE Local mm. 938. And they've been trying to do this for a while, but mm. they haven't gone public with their campaign until the past week. So, okay. so, we, so we're only just finding out about it now. And that's typically how it works. Uh, it, you know, workers will often be organizing behind the scenes, but, yeah. they won't go, but they determine when they go public. The union doesn't tell them when to go public when the workers feel comfortable that they're close, mm. that, that mm. there's motion happening in their yeah. effort to unionize a studio, then that's what, then they'll say, we're ready to go public with this. And that's okay. what happened here. The, the, there's a lot of confidence at Icon that, that they can unionize the studio. Now, here's why that's important. Icon mm. is one of the largest animation studios in Canada. I don't want to say it's the largest, but the 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 um, the president of the studio on his LinkedIn on his he says we're the largest studio in Canada. So, okay. I, I, you know, it, it might be, but I, I don't I don't want to say that because I'm not entirely sure. But yeah. regardless, they are one of the largest studios. They have currently, I think, they're a little bit short of 800 employees, which sure. is. A wow. major studio. I mean, they're, they're getting a lot of work. They're getting a lot of work from uh, Disney, especially mm. right now. And so they, they've got a good pipeline of, of work coming in. And, and they've mm-hmm. grown uh, quite a bit in the last few years. Um, yeah. So uh, they went public. And we should probably just review the story first that, that we published. So, you know, we, we yes. wrote that, yeah. that, you know, they're going public. They've, they've launched this website. Um and here's the website mm-hmm. where they talk about how they're forming a union at the studio. And, and there's a lot of uh, f- facts in there about, you know, questions that people might have. Um, but it's a very comprehensive website. And so we talk about, you know, some of the stuff that they've done, uh, the monsters at work, uh, the Disney series, but based on Pixar's monsters, yes. Inc. They're responsible yeah. for that. Uh, they have a wow. bunch of different shows. Uh, coming up for Disney, including Star Wars, Young Jedi Adventures, and Ariel. Both of those are for mm-hmm. Disney Junior, but but I think some of them are going to also air on Disney Plus. But they're commissioned by Disney Junior. Um, and every uh, every jurisdiction has its own rules for mm-hmm. what what's required. What's the threshold to? become a unionized studio and in British Columbia, which is the province in which Vancouver is located, you need to have at least 55% of your eligible workers sign a union support card. Now we need to point out this is done entirely confidentially. So the the studio Mm. doesn't know who is and isn't signing a card right now. Um, But, but they need at least 55%. And usually when you go public with, uh, uh, something like this, you're you're pretty confident that you're close to that number, and uh, and so we can only assume that, that, that you know they've had hundreds of people uh, sign these union support cards already. Okay, so the, it, it just just for me to understand right how this operates, so that that was one question I had at the start is it, when they announce this because the workers decide when to to announce something like this is it kind of like a full steam effort then you're in the kind of big push now to get this across the line um but they haven't quite gotten there yet exactly yeah okay. yeah i mean yeah. again sometimes you know they 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 
they're usually not going to announce it unless they're confident that they can reach there, but they clearly haven't reached yeah. it. And sometimes you do it because you need that extra kind of publicity. You need that extra mm -hmm. uh, um, just awareness of it for it yeah. to actually happen. So, you know, th there's different times that they announce it, but, but in this case, you know, we really don't know. We, there's no, mm. there's no information available to us about how close they actually are or if they're like yeah. right on the verge and they're just a couple shy and, and they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. We, we don't know that at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very interesting. And, and so, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just, I was about to ask a question about the next stage, but you're going to talk about that anyway. So I yeah. talk first and I can understand later. So we're going to talk about, and, and you know, I'd love to hear from you because I don't know if, you know, viewers may not know, Cole uh, does our in-between um, animation interviews. You do all these <laughs> interviews with the filmmakers. And yeah. you also got to do a plug here. You also do this thing called uh, Animator's Breakfast and and what's your channel name you got you got to plug it it's a animation and right. the guys can see because i commented in the chat if they want to check me out the um the link is there yes um animation thank you cool and and another thing that you don't know about cole is that you are actually you work in the film industry you work on a lot of uh, live action films that are produced in Ireland, including mm -hmm. the universal horror film that comes out next week in the U S Abigail. Uh, you mm -hmm. did a lot of, uh, I want, I want to say like motion graphics or, or what, how do you describe what you do? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to describe. I basically work in, if anyone is familiar with the film industry in terms of like live action, I would work in the art department. That's my department who would generally, uh, America is slightly different to Ireland, right? There's just slightly different structures. I know that because the producers come over and they're kind of scratching their head at how we do things sometimes. Um, but I do motion graphics and screen graphics. So if someone is on a computer or a laptop or texting or there's televisions in the background or something and they want to capture that in camera, not in post, because a lot of that can be a green screen and they VFX it in afterwards. But that can cost quite a bit of money. So sometimes they'll hire someone like me on to do it in pre-production and be there on set to make sure it works, basically. So uh, I know that Abigail that comes out next week, there are some screen graphics in that that I was hired on to. And generally other projects as well, like there's some other ones coming out this year, like um, the M. Night Shyamalan produced The Watchers and stuff like that was shot here. Or um, there's a couple of different movies and TV shows that I worked on last year that will be coming out slowly. And the stuff that I'm working on now, obviously, will be coming out next year. Um, but it, it's interesting because Ireland has, ha, has a very strong film industry and a strong animation industry, as we all know. But in terms of the film industry itself, it's very well protected in ch because it had unions set up in the industry very early on. They're now called guilds, but they're effectively the same thing. And there's rates that everyone knows what they are. A film has to announce what its budget rate is, whatever budget band it's in, and everyone adjusts their rate to that then once they know. So so you kind of go up and down based on the budget specific, whether it's a grade five film, like a big universal film or TV show, or it could be much lower like a, um, a, a national show that doesn't quite have the same budget. So everything is really, it's, it's not opaque. Everyone knows what's going on. Everyone's protected. The hours are set. There's no overtime unless it's pre-approved. Um, and when it does, it's just, you know, it's very well protected. The post industry is not like that at all. Animation, I'm not certain on. Um, but the, the pre-production and production is totally, totally set. I've seen cameramen walk off set if overtime isn't approved and we go up to the, to the time and they have every right to do it. And nobody gives out about them and they'll get another job because they're protected, right? Yeah, yeah. If you do that in animation at a, at a Canadian city, it's, it's not unionized. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you're, you're yeah. not going to yeah. be there the next day probably. So. You won't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we got a lot to go through on this. So, so let's let's just go. First of all, I, I want to point out a comment. Uh, here, here's someone yeah. saying, uh, I was told unionized posters have been covered up by icon show posters around town. So apparently, the that's, yeah, mm. the, uh, you know, 
apparently they're putting up unionized posters and and icon is is uh doing their thing to cover them up this is this i'd is... love to hear more about that if you if if you've more information uh the commenter i can't quite see the name marici um because that's curious i i don't know much about that or verifiable but that's that's very interesting isn't it like that they it's such a battle right it's always a battle of you know change in the studio versus um unions coming in you know the studio heads see it as like uh oh unions coming in that means we're losing slipping on control yeah, ch change doesn't come easily. Let's um, I yeah. mean, so a lot. So they they kind of lay out uh, in in all their materials what kind of changes they mm -hmm. want, and they're pretty standard changes. A lot of the stuff that they want is uh, what every worker wants. But but there are some interesting kind of wrinkles to this. I mean, one of them is that they want protection from sudden layoffs. Everyone wants that. But one of the big things with mm -hmm. Icon is that like many Canadian studios that are of a certain size, they don't, there's not enough manpower and, and or, mm -hmm. you know, woman power, uh, human power in Canada. Right. We got to yeah. be careful about terms, right? It, it, you know, we're still stuck in these <laughs> old terms. Just power. There's power. power. There's yeah. not enough yeah. uh, human power Bodies. in Canada. Yeah. Right. So they recruit a lot of people from overseas to come and work there. So mm -hmm. a lot of these people are on visas that are specific to icon like you get a you get a work permit and i've i i've experienced but with this too because i lived in canada for five years and, and uh. so i i i've had to deal with all this myself but you get a work permit and it's specific to that company so icon they're asking you know a, a lot of times you know production you know ends and you don't necessarily roll onto another production they're like well we don't have more work for you but mm -hmm. that really doesn't work if you've moved from like uh, Latin America where they, you know, they yes, bring people yeah. up from Brazil and stuff, well, you're thousands of miles away from home and suddenly you're like, oh, wait, uh, one week, you told me one week bef before my job ends that I don't have a job. And then now what am I mm. going to do? Because I can't work for any other Canadian studio, right? So I got to yeah. go back. I mean, you're basically asking people to up in their lives and, and, you know, you're at the mercy of the studio and they're saying, we, we, we don't want that. We want to have the, you know, we want some like advanced notice. We want some, mm -hmm. you know, understanding that if you're bringing us over thousands of miles from another country that, you know, you'll take care of us a little bit, you know, we're giving yeah. you a lot of ourselves. Why don't you, you know, give back a little to us and, and let us know. And, and, and that also uh, ties into their, Second thing, which is immigration assistance, uh, they, they, you know, they, they don't really provide, uh, I'm, I'm sure they provide, you know, there, there's HR that provides immigration assistance, but the union itself can also provide resources that are independent of ICON and, and they can help people figure things out if they get caught up in situations like that. Um, mm. Workers want clarity on overtime. Uh, they want, you know, uh, they want one and a half times pay, which is which is what the BC standard is. Except I believe yep. on weekends, if you're working on a weekend, it's two times. So it's it's uh, mm. it, it's it's a little bit more on weekends. But uh, one of the things that Icon does is they offer time in lieu, which is if you work overtime, then you can take time off later, and uh, and and that works for some people, but that's not the standard. So they're just saying. Mm. You know, a lot, for a lot of people, they need the money. They can't wait, you know, like three months later to, to have money. They, they need the money now. If they're working overtime now, they want the money now. So, so they yeah. want a standardized default overtime pay rather than this, this time in lieu uh, system. But also, and, like, if, if they're offering time in lieu, if they're suddenly laid off, they'll never get that time in lieu, you know? It, well, it, yeah, it, well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so... So this, this is what's interesting is that, and we're going to get into this later, is that mm. Icon has actually changed that since, since this campaign happened. They're, they're, they're oh, like wow. rapidly okay. making changes to try to go up to union standards, but mm. they've only done it in the last two weeks. It's like, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, protections from generative AI and outsourcing, mm -hmm. uh, just be, you know, you can't really prevent that, but people want to know what's going on. They want more say in that. Guaranteed annual wage increases, that's a very common thing. Um, extended yep. health benefits and retirement benefits. Um, you know, one, one of the things is, is 
you can't build a sustainable career if if you're working for a studio and they give you great benefits, but then you get laid off. You know, mm. those don't transfer over to another studio. Yeah. With a union, yeah. you know, your health and retirement benefits stay consistent across your entire career, right? So, so you can carry that over. So, you know, you can give the most generous health and retirement benefits, but if you're only at a studio for three years and it, and it ends after that, then, then really yeah. what's, what's the point of that, right? Well, I, wow! I never knew about extended health benefits. I've never, <laughs> I've never even heard of that. That's really cool. I mean, it's a big thing in, in America where everything is so. Or this is Canada, obviously. I don't know what the is the healthcare system okay there? Is it or is it as expensive as America? Or oh no, it's it's, it's great there. Yeah, C C okay. Canada yeah. has has a national health system. So that was uh, one of the big shocks when I moved back to the mm -hmm. U.S. Is I was back in the position of having to pay for health care and health care is insane in the United States, but Canada provides, I mean, it, it's not, it's yeah. not, it's not the greatest. It sounds like system. they're the slogan of the country. Canada provides, you know, <laughs> no, they do. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's not yeah. the greatest like health system. Like sometimes you just want to pay out of pocket because there's wait times and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh -huh. But, but if you have a major event in your life that, that, you know, is going to, you know, that could bankrupt you in the U S versus in Canada, there, there mm -hmm. is, there is enough of a safety net that you're going to be taken care of. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so yeah, that's, that's the story there. Um, mm. so oh, here's a new wrinkle to the story that, um, that ever since this unionization movement became known, became public icon has suddenly been, uh, becoming a better company to work for. And this is something that uh, if you work at Icon if, or if you have friends who work there, you may have seen this, but otherwise you have not seen this. This was now sent to us. This is a letter, uh, email that went out. <sighs> what? From, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's our big surprise. Of, well, it's one of many big surprises. We've got some other ones coming up for oh my God. Coyote versus me. Acme. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, so I'm strapped into this roller coaster. <laughs> Take me. Yeah. So let's go. Just before you this. jump in, yeah. just before you jump in, there's mm -hmm. two things uh, there, Amit. I just want to address two comments. Mm -hmm. uh, lost of ghost hours put in to meet quotas at Icon. Okay, interesting. Um, and stuff like glasses, pharmacy, dental, or physio is not covered, though, unless you have a healthcare plan. Okay, so that's for Canada. Great. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, Please. dental is not covered, unfortunately. I, I, I learned that too. So. <laughs> another another crazy thing I learned in Canada is that Quebec, where I was living, Quebec province, they don't yeah. put fluoride in the water, and um and and like everyone's like, oh that's great, but no, if you don't know that, you need to have like extra fluoride in your you, you toothpaste, do need to and so your teeth. yeah, you yeah. get cavities yeah. there. You, you, no one tells you that. So mm -hmm. anyway, so so let's let's go. D uh, so again, Shay Wageman is the president of Icon. And, wow. uh, he's, he's been sending, um, you know, a lot of emails out. We got access to one of them and, mm -hmm. um, and this is, this is kind of what he's telling employees. He says, as promised in our continued quest to create a great offering for artists and employees and to maintain a positive direction based upon green lights we've received from Disney, Warner and Netflix last month, we're able to communicate more good news today. So, okay. um, <laughs> classic yeah. corporate speak. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> So, um, you know, they, they kind of lay out this, uh, we appreciate the positive feedback we've received, mm -hmm. and these are the policies that we have that we're going to continue, which is uh, flex days and, and paid sick days, 4% vacation pay, five additional vacation days per year for those with over five years of service to ICOM, which I don't know what percentage of studio that is, but, but you know, yeah. I don't know who lasts five years at any service studio nowadays, but Very great good. if you yeah. do, you know. Uh, yeah. Paid Christmas break of one week continues. Automatic support for foreign workers with early renewals for work permits. So that's it. That's that's one of the things that that um, you know is kind of a sticking point for a lot of employees. There, it's important for big studios again in Canada to to have that quarterly town hall meetings. And then, based upon employee feedback from our 2023 survey and in-person discussions this year, we're happy to mm -hmm. announce the following new offerings. So effective April 8th, right? It's it's kind of crazy that, you know, like they've been around for a long time, 
but it, it, it's a little curious that, that they just decided to do this stuff right when the unionization movement became public, right? Like, like you could have mm-hmm. offered this last year. You could have offered it two, three years ago, right? You've been growing for years. You've had hundreds of employees for years. And somehow it didn't occur to you that, that you know, you need to do this until, oh, we're just, we're just going to do it now that we know the union wants to, you know, they want a union. Yeah. Not now we're going to offer this. So yes, four yeah. weeks. So this is a new thing that they introduced this week on April 8th, four weeks minimum notice regarding any layoffs. That's insane. Why would you mm. not give four weeks minimum notice regarding a layoff prior to that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like what, what made you suddenly decide to do this? Like this, that's, it's, it's like, you know, you should know if you're on a production, whether there's work coming down the line, it's just, yeah. Additional five paid vacation days per year for anyone with over one year of service. Um, 5% annual minimum raise for a cost of living increase. Was that not there before? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but that, no, it Perhaps, clearly yeah. wasn't. Perhaps yeah. Not. yeah. Uh, vacation requests reviewed and approved within five days by production teams. So that's good. And a new OT request mm-hmm. tool rolling out this month for our pipeline team which is artists operated at a desktop level to submit overtime requests. And this is, again, I, I believe that one of the things that the union is asking for, which is for guaranteed overtime pay instead of time in lieu, they've already implemented that change uh, mm. for, their, for, for the workers there. So they're basically trying to head off the union by saying, look at all this stuff we're giving you that we didn't think of giving you before, but now that we know you want it, you know, and, and you're gonna unionize the studio, you know, th- this is, this is, you know, now we're going to give it to you. So, mm. so the press, so e- even, even if the union doesn't happen there, they've already had to become a better studio for their workers as a result of this movement. Yeah. That's great news. And yeah. um, I just want to address a comment here. Animator 101, lots of misconceptions being said here. Time and Lou legally has to be paid out if they are terminated or laid off. That's cool. I didn't know that. And I'm happy okay. to be checked on this kind of stuff. I think yeah, that's, yeah, that's really, great really cool. to know. Absolutely. That's good to know. Um, and it's also good to know that, um, well, it, it's unfortunate that it takes something as massive as a union demanding fair rights for a company to change, right? Obviously, but sometimes it's what it needs to happen because otherwise it's just you know, the studio heads might see it as noise from the bottom, you know, and they're not focused. But when that becomes real, then then they can start to step in. And I've worked for companies before where they do a review every year and they try their best to implement it yearly, which is a wonderful thing. And I didn't really appreciate it at the time <laughs> until, you know, you go to other studios and they just don't listen at all, you know. And um, I'd be curious. I'm so curious to see how this goes because would people still be interested in, in signing for the union then if the positive changes are coming in yeah i mean so w- w- one of the yeah. things that that you know again isn't addressed is you know a lot of benefits are specific mm. to your company that you're working at yeah and yeah if if you know animators are very nomadic there's there's no there's mm. very few situations where you're working 30 years at a company it's not like the old days you are jumping around from studio to studio And so basically, if you're not part of a union, you're starting from scratch every time you join a new studio. And so then your health care, your pension, everything, you have to deal with that yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And and, Mm -hmm. just it's 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 almost an impossible uh, task to do. But if you Mm -hmm. have a union, what that does is it builds a sustainable career. It's not, you know, VFX. We see it. It's even worse than VFX. Mm -hmm. But. You know, they take young talent and people in their yeah. 20s and 30s who don't have families, who don't have kids yet, and they just burn them out. And then burn people have to yeah. leave and they have to go to another industry because it's n- they realize when they reach about the age of 35, this is not a sustainable career. I can't actually work in animation for the rest of my life. I'm, I'm you know, mm. but yeah. if you have a union, you look at L.A. And, and you see all these people reaching 30, 40, 50 years in the business, not at one studio, but because they're yes. part of a union. They're still working in their fifties, sixties, and, and you know, often in their seventies, and and they're they're comfortable doing so because they have some safety net to catch them mm. if if, uh, if something happens. So 
Yeah, I think that's very good, actually, because it is, it's a great point to understand that just how contract based the, the industry is, you know, um, and like we were talking about last week, there's very few studios that are still committed to, especially in, in America, keeping the full production pipeline in house, right? So it means that you're going to be jumping around a lot more. Let's look at a couple more comments and then we got to move on yeah. because, um, you know, we, we got a lot to talk about today. So, um, <laughs> uh, if you join the union, they couldn't go back on the promises they give. Mm. But I think that the whole point that they're giving promises is to dissuade people like, look, we're changing, right? We're, we're changing. Yeah. You know, we're changing. Um, and it's, it, they're not saying dissuading you from joining the union explicitly in that email. They're just saying, hey, we, we've listened to your feedback and we're changing. And, and I'd imagine that that's in the hope that people don't unionize, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that, if somebody says, what about working from home in a union? They don't allow that. I don't know if that's true. I will mm -hmm. definitely follow up with IATSE people that I know. I don't know of any uh, rule that says you can't work from home nowadays. I mean, most, mm. uh, so much of the union jobs in LA right now are work from home. So it's, it, that's that I don't, I'm not sure about that, but I will double check yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. Um, icon doesn't have enough space for people who all work in the office. Are you talking about the company or the union? The union will not stop you from making a collective agreement that you can work from home. A absolutely. I, I don't know of yeah, anything yeah. that says, you know, you can't work from home. Mm -hmm. uh, they literally say they won't allow work from home if there's a union. Oh, so Icon is saying they won't allow work from home if there's a union. Mm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wow. That that's 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 well, pretty. That's nasty. not going to help them. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's, a, that's a, the, yeah. I'll just leave the studio then. You know, that, that's, yeah, that's, exactly. That's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You know, why would why would you even mm. uh, say that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a promise if it's actually happening, though. Hmm. You know, policies are in contracts, right? Anyway, there's there's some conversation going on here. Interesting, yeah, very interesting conversation because I, I'd like to see how that plays out. Okay, saying Icon didn't say that. Okay, at Icon, all. yeah, okay. That, that, that's not. Yeah, that's I mean, not a yeah, realistic. this is. Yeah, these are these are comments that are coming in, but it's not necessarily verified. We're not distributing this as the news. It's just really interesting to kind of f hear what's coming in, because if um, I can't imagine a studio would say that, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense that, because the the a lot of the industry since COVID has been work from home, right? It's it's totally part of any any company I know. Even me in the film industry here in Ireland, you can work from home. It's no problem. When you're on set, obviously you need to be on set, but for any pre-production, it's just it just has become so common as part of it. I don't know why any company would fight against that really, um, without it affecting them negatively. Yeah, so we got to move on. I'm going I'm to wrap this up. I'm going to say a couple things. One <laughs> is I have been hearing that there has been retaliation at Icon. They are going oh. after the um, some of the organizers. I can't verify that, right. but but I do hear that that they have been letting go some of the people that they they believe to be organizing, and that mm. it, it, retaliation if they were unionized is is illegal. You can't do that, and there may even be recourse here if they're being let go before there's a union. So um so there, yeah. there's some interesting stuff happening, but also what we're seeing in the comments here is that there's a, there's a lot of uh, lack of clarity, and that's why it's so important mm. to attend the town halls when when they're doing these town halls. If you're working at Icon, you really have to like ask these questions from your from the union reps right um mm -hmm. they're they're that that's their whole job they actually have people on staff who have the answers to these questions and and the answer may not always be what you want to hear but but you know there it's really important to get clarity on this stuff clarity so, 100%, um, yeah so yeah so we're going to move on now um this is this is a topic that i, I don't think is going away because most of the canadian animation industry is not unionized right now and yeah. um, and there's a huge movement there happening. Um, you know, Wild Brain and um, and Titmouse have and Dneg Vancouver. They've all unionized over there, and and there's a big movement going on. So we're gonna be staying mm -hmm. on top of this for for a long time to come. Wow, look at this. Sorry, I mean, I know before we go on, Icon United in the comments here. Retaliation is illegal even while organizing. Nobody is legally allowed to be terminated for support. Exactly like you said. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, Icon United. We're on to the next. Uh, 
Yeah, let's move on. So, um, yeah. so yeah. next up, our our other big topic for today. And Cole, you got You got a hard out. What's what's what what time you have to get? No, out? no, you can keep going. Don't okay. worry. Yeah, okay, cool. I can shift that around. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, uh, next up, we got Coyote versus Acme. This is uh, mm. I, I want to say this is a lighter topic, but it's really not. It's it's just as heavy. This is this is one of the most insane situations that's been going on, and it is the story that won't go away. This is the film that mm. that you know Warner Brothers you know, just can't, just can't get people to stop talking about. And I think that's, that's what they really want. But, but one of the craziest things that happened is this week, uh, in, in the New York times, they published an article just, uh, it says published April 9th. So it came out earlier this week. And this is what's really interesting about it is if, is if you, uh, look at the bottom of this piece, uh, it says a, a, a version of this article appears in print on April 14th, page nine of the Sunday magazine. So this is going to be published in the New York Times Sunday magazine this weekend. They never <laughs> talk about animation. So it's amazing. Yeah. This is a this is a, a huge kind of uh, boost for people who are interested in the film and the film and, and the article is, is nothing that we don't know already. It, it mm-hmm. just basically goes through the idea that that this is what the studio is trying to do. They've done this before with Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Haunt. They, 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 they kind of write these films off for, uh, for some kind of a credit. They declare it as a loss, right? So, so then yeah. it, it's more profitable for them at this point to, to write it off as a loss than to then put in, you know, tens of millions more in marketing. And it, and it just comes from the idea that the, the people running the studio, they don't have, faith in their in their films that they're making they, they don't even really mm. particularly like films people like Zasloff they, they're not film buffs and and they don't you know they're, they're just looking at it purely from a financial perspective the mm. only piece of news that is new in here is at the very bottom they they put in a quote from a Warner Brothers representative and uh, the person says um uh the film remains available for acquisition. So back okay. in February, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Wow. No, no, that's, uh, yeah. I, I didn't know they were still, was that their position before? Was so it? here, so here's what's interesting. So yeah, um, back in February, uh, when Warner Brothers was doing their quarterly earnings report, a lot of people felt, and, and we, we thought so too, it might happen, that Warner Brothers would use that quarterly earnings report to uh, report that they've permanently shelved the film and it's, it's no yeah. longer available. Now, that did not happen. And since then, there's been no update about mm. what's going on with the film. So uh, this week, after this article came out, I reached out to people who are who absolutely know what's going on with the film, uh, sources mm. who are connected to the film. And I said, what, what's going on with the film? Mm. And uh, well, there's really like no one, even they don't actually know what's going on with the film. But here's what we can definitively say. The <laughs> film has not been shelved, right? It, okay. has, not, it, is, it has not been yeah. written off for a tax credit. Or, or for for whatever it is for for whatever accounting maneuver that they're using to do this, it is still an active project. So we we've it's it's widely known that that Amazon and Netflix have made a bid to to acquire the film for for streaming, and they're still yeah. interested in it, as far as we understand. Um, and one of the one of the really good options for the film is Paramount. Paramount actually wants mm-hmm. to pick up the film and put it out for theatrical release. Which would be crazy if they release a Wiley e. Coyote film, and 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 you know because <laughs> it's not even their character, but they want the film, yeah. and uh, Warner Brothers, it's just you know, it, it, partly it's the cost, they they the, the, it's the amount of money they want more money for it, but the other part of it is ego, I think, you know they they don't want to give a film to another studio that becomes a big hit. And then suddenly yeah. they're like, everyone's like, why, why did you not release this film yourself? They just don't yes. want, yeah. they, they, they don't want. And, and this is in a, a kind of a lot of fans, a lot of people in the industry are kind of putting their foot down and saying, you can't do this. We're not, we're not going to let you, we're going to keep talking about this film mm-hmm. for as long as it mm-hmm. takes. And so we're kind of at a standstill, you know, they don't know what to do. 
But yeah. fans, as long as they keep up the pressure, you know, it, it's going to remain a story. And now, now, you know, the New York Times is, is, uh, is on it. But, but the, the grassroots movement behind this film is absolutely crazy. Uh, one of the things that's happening right now is there are, uh, let me try to pull this up here. Yeah. There's, uh, there's stickers popping up all <laughs> over LA. I don't know who's putting it's them up, but there are stickers popping up that say, you know, release Coyote versus Acme. Um, <laughs> and, and check this out. Like, I, uh, wow. I can't quite, well, there we go. Check that I'm, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are popping I mean, up crazy. on street signs around yeah. LA. Here's what's crazy. I I heard that people have seen these stickers up on uh, on the other side of the Atlantic in France. They're 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 being posted up there too. So so if you see one of these, these are these are images that people have been sending to us, but if you see one of these out in out in the wild, uh you know, send mm. it to us. Wow. That's that's amazing, isn't it? But it's um, just just because I, I'm approaching this from my perspective, which is ignorant. The it it would make sense to me the most that like it, when you keep talking about something like this, right? People want to see it, so it's already no matter no, at any stage once this is released, when anyone releases it, it's going to be watched by a lot of people. You know, it's going, it already has an audience built in. Um, and it has now, because of the movement, it's got, it, I mean, if you told me this was released on YouTube tomorrow, I'd be watching it in seconds. You know, I, I would, I would just because of the fact that I can't watch it, but also you've told me it's a good film. <laughs> I really want to see it. And because of what they're doing is tremendously unfair. Um, having, finalize the film to write it off just because you said they don't want to spend more money marketing it because they predicted it would be a loss is that what they're saying so they just write it off i i don't know what their internal kind of uh yeah you, yeah. you know I, I don't know what their feedback was that they they decided that this film wasn't wasn't going to make money mm. i don't know yeah i i like i like you say though i i have seen the film and uh and and i i did this uh little write-up about it after after i saw it and it mm. is like I say, it's it's a really great film. Um, it, it I was not expecting this film to be as emotionally packed. It's one of, it's one of the few hybrids I've seen since Roger Rabbit, where yeah. both the live action characters and the animated characters are working towards the same end, right? Like they're not like if you mm. look at like Tom and Jerry, the the one that came out a couple of years ago. Um, it, it felt like the Tom and Jerry segments were like separate from the actual story that was going on in the film. They didn't really ever okay. connect properly, but mm -hmm. in this film, it's like, it's a complete story and, and it's, it's what the coyote is doing and what the live action characters are doing. It's, it's all part of the same story and you're leading toward this amazing conclusion that is like, like, you know, like you almost have tears in your eyes. It's, it, it's, wow. it's, and, and you're like, it's, it's like <laughs> Roadrunner and coyote. Like what? But it is really, <laughs> really a special film, and and so yeah. I'm I'm like I'm 100 percent behind this grassroots campaign. Every every week or two, we see um, uh, the re release Coyote versus Acme trending on Twitter. Like it's it's and yeah. it's like the greatest anti marketing campaign for a film that I've ever seen. Like they're not <laughs> even trying to market it, and yet they're doing a great job. Like if they if they do this for another year pretty yeah. much like you know everyone in the world is going to know about the film right if they don't release mm. it for another year so i, I don't know maybe, maybe they should just keep not releasing it and just have like the entire <laughs> globe want to see this film yeah. yeah well i love the idea of those stickers and if i see them uh, i definitely snap it i'd even love to get my hands on some because that sounds amazing put some up myself you know that's yeah. what i'm saying it's yeah they're, they're floating around I, I i don't have them yeah. but but i know they're floating mm. around and they're being put up in la like i mean it, it's it's you know, yeah. uh, this is a street sign in LA and, um, yeah. and I, I didn't take this photo, but, but somebody did, uh, <laughs> yeah. let's see if I, can. there we go. Let me have a quick, quick, uh, look at the chat. Dude, don't spoil it. You nearly gave away the ending. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I didn't say anything about the yeah, ending. No, <laughs> no, I know. 
Uh, I've been really no, no. supporting the, the movie of how much this is interest, an interesting concept of a Looney Tunes movie. Yeah, I totally agree. Sorry, Amid, you were about to say. I forgot what I was going to say. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not important. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's have a look. Uh, still talking a bit about the union, which is great, guys. Keep keep on that because that's so important. Um, cartoons will never die. Some of us are still going from new grounds from our childhood. Uh, you know what? And I agree. That's, that's something really interesting about the Looney Tunes is that they have a way of staying relevant to each generation. And and not just the original cartoons, like they they're always kind of reinventing themselves somehow. When I was growing up, it was all Space Jam. You know, I <laughs> Space Jam was a huge thing, and you'd hope that something like this, Coyote versus Acme, I keep going to call it Coy- Coyote versus Ugly, but that's uh, <laughs> well, there's that film <laughs> Coyote Coyote Ugly, Coyote Ugly, yeah. I know, yeah, and it's sequel Coyote versus Ugly now, and but Coyote versus Acme, yeah, you'd hope that something like this is. Uh, just because there's such a rich property right it's such a rich property and it's so sad that um something that the way you talk about it is so strong that they you know the, the confidence isn't there to release it or whatever the internal thing way i'm reading it from a distance you know yeah i mean I, i've spoken to people who are you know involved in the film and and it's just you know it, it mm. really seems like the people at the top of the studio running the studio don't appreciate film they don't they don't even know what they have they they you know it's it's a question of whether they've even seen the film or not but if they have they they clearly don't understand the context of it they don't understand hybrid film they're not film buffs and and so Mm. they're just money people and you know what's him what's what's zaz Zaz, uh, what's his name zazlov Uh, yeah david zazlov yeah what's his background i don't know I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, he 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 was yeah. running Discovery, and um, and Discovery, you know, their bread and butter was, uh, kind of reality shows. Reality shows. shows. So yeah. so he comes from that background, but but I I don't know. I I don't believe he has a uh, film background. I think he has a business background. But okay, that's actually a good question. Yeah. I should I should look into that as well. Yeah. But how would I mean? How would you feel? Because I've I've worked on a production before where, the some of the episodes that we worked on didn't come out right and. And, you know, for, you know, you move on as, as a person who's working in film, yeah. you know, you move on and, and, and whatever, but, but I, it, it did bother me. I mean, that the, it mm. didn't come out, you know, and, and I'm wondering about you, like, do you, if you work on a film, you know, do you, do you care if it comes out, like if Abigail comes out or doesn't come out next week? Or, or is it kind of like, well, like, you know, like if you're a director, if you're a writer, I mean, if you're investing like five years of your time, but what happens if you're like production crew on, on a film, how does that feel? If, if there have been f- some projects I've worked on that I didn't have a good experience with and I was indifferent to the result of it. Um, but I know like things like Abigail, for example, I had an amazing time make, making that film. And when when you put so much of yourself into something and, and it stops being, the, the dialogue stops being their film and becomes our film, you know that there's something you care about and you want to see it succeed and you're curious about the reaction to it. And it's really interesting. I know it's not necessarily what you asked, but I'm always so interested the most in, this is why I like the live stream because we can interact directly with people right now, right? We can look at the comments and we can talk to people. Whereas when you create something, you, you're putting so much of yourself into it and then you release it, Right. And then you're you're kind of sitting back with your popcorn, kind of seeing how how it's reacted to, and you you don't know how. I always say you never know how something is going to connect with someone. So whatever I work in, I'll always try to do the best that I can. If everyone is on board and everyone's like pointing toward this is something good, but I have worked on some doozies where I'm just like, oh, I'm not sure about this now, you know. But the ones that I'm the most proud of are not just because of the story, but because of the camaraderie of everyone involved and how much everyone believes in it. And you, you want to see that done well by. And from what I've heard of anyone who's worked on, I was going to say Coyote versus Ugly again, Coyote versus Acme, um, they all seem very proud of that film, you know, very proud of it. And so it's a, it's almost a travesty that they're robbed of being able to engage that passion that they've had at the end. And also a lot of these people who worked on this film are, are younger people as well. So yeah. they haven't had the chance to like see their work on, on the big yeah. screen 
as many times as like let's say someone who's made mm. you know 20 30 films it's, it was it was a young crew um and they like you say i've heard only positive things about people who for, from people who worked on the film it was it was a great filmmaking experience on top yeah. of having made a great film i mean that doesn't mm. happen that often so very it's, rare, it's, yeah. it's, it's sorry um, not very rare but <laughs> it's rare yeah <laughs> but the bo bottom line is is oh mm. you know we we constantly see this Twitter trends of like release coyote versus Ashme Acme hashtags going up and yeah. um and people a lot of people I think are confused about like well, isn't the film canned and it's not that's 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 mm. the big news that I can mm. report because I think a lot of times you know a lot of these uh you know YouTube channels and discussions they don't really you know have that inside knowledge of what's going yeah. on I actually reached out to people yeah. who know what's going on and it's very definitively <laughs> confirmed that this film's not dead. This film yeah. could well, still as very a, much be released. Yeah, as a YouTuber, I very, <laughs> you know, as someone with a YouTube channel, I rely on, <laughs> on you. And it's only true Cartoon Brew. I've really started to connect deeper with the industry outside of Ireland, right? And, and it's kind of very eye-opening to see how it operates, you know, um, rather than kind of sitting back from a perspective and reading releases and kind of making up your own mind. It's really interesting to talk to the people who are behind it all. Um, so that's that's very, very interesting. It's a different, you're totally right, different perspective. So uh, we're going to wrap up, but I, I wanted to, you know, highlight a few things that have caught my attention this week. And um, mm -hmm. Cole, if you have anything that's caught your attention, we can kind of do a share, uh, show and tell maybe. Um, but the I have nothing the, to show. You have yeah, nothing to show. To. Okay, well then you're gonna listen. Yeah. To, you're gonna hear me show things, or you're gonna see yeah. me show things. I, I'm you're gonna, gonna be told. To me show things. Um, <laughs> let me let, let me let me pull this up. I, I'm I'm working on two monitors here. I gotta figure out a better system for this. But yeah. um, the first the first thing I wanted to highlight was this uh, new print publication called Dummy. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's out of Pittsburgh and, um, and I don't want to get the person's name wrong. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a uh, John Kelly and, um, and I'm going to show the first issue. I don't know. Whoa, if, look at you. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. my God. I, I actually bought the first issue. I actually subscribed yeah. to it because it's like right up my alley. The first issue is the art of Pee Wee's Playhouse. And yeah. he interviewed uh, Gary Panter, Wayne White, Rick Heitzman, Mark Newgarden, and Kaz. And it's a small magazine. It's like 40 pages long. But mm. it's a lot of like original research on Pee Wee's Playhouse. And it's just really, Whoa. it's really well yeah. done. It's a small print run magazine. Uh, but it's, it's, if you like print, this is fantastic. And the second mm. issue that he's working on He's got people like, uh, he's talking to Bobby London, who created the underground comic Dirty Duck, um, uh, Robert Armstrong, who created this character you see right there up in the top of the magazine, Mickey Rat. Um, yeah. And also, uh, <laughs> Bob, Bob Armstrong, he famously came up with the term couch potato. Uh, he created a, he, the couch potato uh, idea is, wow. is from Bob Armstrong. He's a, he's a legend in underground comics. Um, the Air Pirates. Uh, he's got an interview with Kaz in the second issue, and I've I've no, no reason to plug this other than I think it's fantastic. It's it's kind of like mm. we need cool uh, magazines about cartoons, and there just really aren't any. And and you know John Kelly, uh, who who does a lot of work in comics, uh, he's history and research out of Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, he's doing amazing work. So, so I highly recommend this. And and mm. it's just starting up. I think you can still. The, they did a like a hundred issue print run of the first issue, and it sold out immediately. And now he's been doing like additional print runs for it. It's just beautifully produced, and it's a lot of fun to uh, to look at. So, um, so I highly recommend. How, it. how did he? Yeah. Um, do you know anything about how he started it? Like, did he just kind of finance it himself, or did he kickstart something? Or I think it's just self finance. Yeah, I wow. mean, he did he did a hundred issues for the uh, hundred copies of the first issue, and it sold out like almost instantly. But it's just, I think it's a kind of a small passion thing that he's doing, and mm -hmm. um, and you know, like the the age of zines is kind of over, but but there's still yeah. some people kind of keeping it alive a little bit. So. 
Well, yeah, well, I do think, you know, that's something I see a lot on Kickstarter is every year they have, um, but these are very small zines. And I, and I do, you're so right. I love printed things, it's just tactile. It's nice where they'll print out tiny little games they'll have in a zine or something. And and the best part of that is getting the printed one and you have it. And it's Like I said, it's tactile and it's beautiful. So something like Dummy, is it, so is, the, is it specific to uh, illustration, cartoons, animation? Like what's the... Well, he's only done one one issue, and he's only <laughs> so, so yeah. I I don't know what he's Tell doing. Me everything. Yeah, yeah, I subscribed to it because I was so impressed by by the first issue and the lineup for the second issue. I think he's going to be focusing on comic art, underground cartoons, um, mm. just you know. But but you know, like someone like so you know you got like someone like uh, you know working on um, Pee Wee's Playhouse, like Cass, yeah. like he's a cartoonist. But he's also, yeah. you know, works on SpongeBob, you know, so he's he's, yes. he's an animation guy as well. So th th there's mm -hmm. a lot of crossover in, in these mm -hmm. worlds. And I don't, what's the site? The site is dummyzine.com. It doesn't show on, uh, on, on our, on our, you know, screen right now, but it's called dummyzine.com. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well done, John. Yeah. That's incredible. And, um, Passion project, right? Passion projects. Yeah. Yeah, passion project. This means you're not making any money, which is kind of <laughs> right. That's, <laughs> that's what we all do. Yeah. None of us make any money. We just want to do things that we like to do. Well, right? Cartoon Brew was a passion project. Let's not forget, wasn't that, it? At the that's start, how it started out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, we didn't make any money like the first five years, right? Yeah. We still Cartoon still Saloon was a passion money, project. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's a passion project? Cartoon Saloon was a passion project. You know, anytime well, I yeah. talk to the guys down there and Tom, and they were just young and naive and just like that's just keep going and they somehow just managed to stumble their way <laughs> to making a feature film and uh, made and kept going and now they're one of the best you know independent animation studios in the world you know really and truly they're phenomenal but again and, a passion and, project and you your, your your animation channel a animation that's a passion project and that that's is evolving into one of the best animation channels on youtube right now so Thank you so much, man. Thank you. And it's going to devolve into crap again uh, very, very soon. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, and the, the next thing not. you want to show, yeah, me too. The next thing you want to show is something I'm actually passionate about as well. But I'll okay, well, how about you lead this one? Um, this is, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, let me just give an intro and then you can talk about it. But mm -hmm. um, some of the best animation writing today is in newsletters, uh, there's Animation mm -hmm. Obsessive, which I yeah. subscribe to. And even if you don't subscribe to it, it comes out twice a week. One of the issues is free every week. Highly recommend it. It's a sub stack. And the other sub stack mm -hmm. that I really like is Move Madly. It's a new one from Alex Dudok DeWitt, who mm -hmm. I'm proud to say used to be the associate editor. Um, and at some point was, I think, deputy editor at Cartoon yeah. Brew. He's since moved on. He's working in the film industry and, and doing mm -hmm. a lot of cool stuff. But he also has this um, uh, newsletter and this this latest uh, issue that, that he put out, this article that he put out. I, I really loved this article uh, pop up. I really love this article. So um, so I wanted to, I wanted to highlight it. It's free. There's nothing preventing you from subscribing yeah. it to it on Substack. But you go ahead, Cole. Yeah, Alex is such a. Um wonderful person to talk to i i in terms of like animation and creativity i love spending time with him now unfortunately i only ever get to see him in annecy every year but i think like, gravitate toward him like a moth to flame i just love sitting and talking and, and obviously when i started cartoon brew i had the privilege of working with him briefly before he moved on you know and just just how i think the term i'd use for alex in in his thoughts is tremendously authentic and well researched right he's very well researched in how he approaches things and this is a man who wrote a book on the grave of the fireflies you know and can also read japanese and speaks multiple languages so he's got this incredible insider knowledge but he's very curious and humble and i don't know if you know this but i'm i'm part of a, a society the society for animation studies right i'm, oh, I didn't know I'm you were part, part of, that. of that yeah i'm in there and alex is always asking questions in there and he's always very helpful and comments back so he's like very entwined in terms of an intellectual level of animation but now also he he decided to move into production so i cannot highlight his words more like i can't recommend what he says more because it always makes me think in, a, in another way about the medium 
and and like you said that new article he posted uh what we talk about when we talk about animation is just it's really strong and i know exactly he quotes from guillermo del toro talking about um you know animation is a medium not a genre something we all know we all say and i remember at annecy he stood up before Pinocchio and declared it to the room, you know, he's like, I'm sick of having to say this, you know, but everyone here gets it. But um, yeah, this, these articles, Annex's Substack, can't recommend it enough. Sit the time, go through it, get your cup of tea, your biscuits going, your toffee pops, whatever you want. Um, this is good stuff. One of the things I think that um, really stuck out to me about this is this is this particular article that came out, which is, what it's called, what we talk about when we talk about animation. Mm. He talks yeah. about a topic that is very rarely discussed and is something that, that is always on the top of my mind, but no one else talks about it. And it's the paradigm shift that's happened in animation because of technology. So yeah. the, the, animation used to be one thing. It used to be a process and a product, right? You, you, there's an animation process and a product. And, and yeah. up until the 1960s, you really didn't have, you couldn't see animation without somebody actually creating animation, right? Mm. But because of technology, a lot of animation product, and I don't mean product in a bad way, I just, I'm just using it as a term to, to differentiate it from process. A lot of animation product today, like video games or um, mm. CG dynamics VFX. and yeah. simulation, yeah. VFX, crowd animation, um, AI animation, real-time avatars, the audience mm. perceives that as animation. However, mm. there's no animation process involved in creating it. There's not an, when you play a video game, there's not an animator sitting in your TV screen animating every drawing of Mario, right? Like there, 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 mm. But it's, it's pre-made animation. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking at a Facebook uh, avatar, like a real-time avatar, it's a filter kind of, and, and the perception of it is that it's animated to, to an average, you, yeah. you could put it on TV and it'll be like, oh, that's animation, but there's no animation process involved in creating it. So there's mm. been this divergence that happened sometime around the 1960s, 70s, where the process and the product were no longer the same. You, you, and so now we have two things. One is there's an animation process and then there's an animation product that is not sometimes created through a process or sometimes not. And mm. what does that mean? No one knows, right? But yeah. also no one even really talks about it. And this is one of the first times I've seen somebody actually like discuss this topic mm. in, an, in an intellectual way that, that actually makes sense to, to you know, like, like he's trying to look at a, the bigger picture and try to understand it. And so it, it's, it's, it's a topic that, you know, I, I, I often wonder like why, you know, like Society for Animation Studies should do a whole, one of their whole years of, of like their, uh, their talks on this topic because it's, mm -hmm. it's such a huge uh, issue and, and yeah. we don't really, there's no answer, there's no right or wrong, there's no answer to it, but mm -hmm. it, it certainly needs to be understood better because most of the stuff, especially with AI coming in, you're seeing all this AI yeah. like animation but it wasn't created through a process of animation. It was, it was just generated. It was generated. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think, I think we need to, uh, you know, have more discussion about it. And the fact that Alex talked about it like this really stood out to me. Yeah, I totally agree because it is, it, the thing is right. When, once CG kind of came in and, and things, um, took a radical paradigm shift, right. But there was still, they're still and still do using traditional pipeline methods to make the animated work. But then with the 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 uh, creation of video games and real time rendering, right, which is the big thing from video games that we learned in Unreal Engine, that then can develop filters because they're real time rendering things over your face. But now with AI, because AI nobody can predict what it's going to do right we, we really can't but we do know it'll change it drastically as it already has but the the, tr the kind of transition has been really fuzzy i think alex used the term fuzzy i remember that in the article and and that's a really interesting thing to think about i really think that i would love to hear more about it really and truly i would love to hear more people's opinions and thoughts 
if anyone in the comments <laughs> i know you're still going crazy about the unions there guys but um if anyone has something to say i would love to hear what you think about the kind of transition around this um because it's it's huge it's really really huge but you're right nobody's talking about it um yeah so i i would um uh i can't wait to actually go through the comments we haven't really been keeping up but we, sh <laughs> we should have been but but there's a huge discussion yeah. going on and um and afterwards I'm, I'm gonna be looking through all that um i don't even know how long yet oh wow <laughs> holy moly yeah. wow um, yeah, we need to do a better job of that next time, keeping up with comments. But also, I, th I think there's a lot of discussion going on between people as well, so that's that's great. Um, mm. Anyway, this has been uh, a really interesting week uh, in terms of the discussion that we had here. Mm -hmm. And um, and at some point, when I feel a little bit more comfortable with the tech, I think, you know, yeah, I explained, you know, we had some issues this morning. But once I do feel more comfortable with the tech, we're going to bring on some guests and, uh, and, mm. and have guests come on and talk about different topics as well. So there's a lot coming up on this uh, live stream um, that we're yeah. just really getting started. This is our only second edition mm. and, um, and it's, it's going to be weekly and we're going to figure things out slowly. Yeah. So thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you. Thank you for your lively discussion on the comments. I, I find that so amazing and fat, uh, fascinating. Um, and hopefully you've ironed out some, some thoughts about unions in there anyways. Um, but thank you so much, Amit. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. And I hope you have a good evening there. If you're on the yeah. Atlantics and the European <laughs> side, like Cole, I hope you guys have a good evening. Uh, if yeah. you're in the US, you still got to work a little bit more before you can call it the weekend i, 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 know, I, I know i still got it's the weekend here baby i'm out know, here shit. you know okay <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you everyone for joining us and uh we'll be back next friday i don't know what time yet but um but we're gonna try to keep it around 11 noon um mm -hmm. i don't know it depends on your schedule too cool so that <laughs> is true because we start we start full production next week so yeah it's gonna be uh, potentially slightly later but not by much okay Cool. cool. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you, guys.